Hey there, this is John Metter. Welcome to the Man to Man podcast. Men everywhere need to be talking to other men of experience and wisdom. Along with my friends, we'll be talking about how to grow as a man, how to find truth to stand on, how to meet the challenges of the day. Join me as we discuss everything from personal growth to fitness, from relationships to leadership. Let's talk man to man. Hey, this is John Metter at Cross City Church, and thank you so much for joining us for Man to Man. This will be our fifth podcast, um, and we had an introduction and then five podcasts, uh, including this one. And we'll be going to about 12 on this particular semester. Um, And we've been working through two verses of Scripture that talk about what it means to be uh, a man. Uh, Man to man is really all about sitting across the table with somebody else and talking about the challenges that men face and how we grow and mature as men. And uh, this is a pretty important uh, week or episode in uh, the Man to Man series here. Um, That verse that I referred to a few moments ago, 1 Corinthians 16, um, two verses in all, uh, they say it this way, 13 and 14 are the verses, and here's what they say. They say that we need to be on the alert, stand strong in the faith, act like men, be strong, and then the next verse says, let all that you do be done in love. So we broke that down into five different things. The first two weeks, we talked about uh, what it means to be on the alert. And then the next two, what it means to stand firm in the faith. Last week, we talked about the gospel that we're supposed to stand in, understanding it well, and sharing it well. And uh, this week, we began the two-part episode series of what it means to act like men. And I've given the men five different C's of maturity, you know. To act like men is not to act like an immature child. That's what that verse actually means in verse 13 and 14. We're to act like mature people, mature men. It's to exhibit the qualities of maturity versus immaturity. Uh, All kinds of things are said today about um, the maturity level of men. Um, You know, old men aren't necessarily mature because of their age, I've known a lot of older men that are immature and babies. Uh, Young men sometimes are mature because of things they've gone through and the lessons they've learned, but maturity is not a given. It doesn't happen just because you age. Maturity happens for a variety of reasons, but it has to be pursued, and it has outside influencers so that we are made mature. Maturity doesn't happen because of convenience. It doesn't happen because... Um, we think we ought to do it. It's more than that. Even though I want you to have a vision and a dream to mature, uh, it takes more than just that. It requires different things impacting us and working on us, chipping away the impurities of our lives and uh, causing us to lean on the most important things to do and the biggest priorities in life. It's a lot of decision-making. It's a lot of uh, correction of actions, uh, behavior modifications, all kinds of things go into acting like men. Men are in a state of confusion in our culture. It's really amazing how many men are confused. There's gender dysphoria where men want to become women. I mean, I absolutely could not believe back in the day when Bruce Jenner, one of the greatest athletes of my generation, uh, chose to become a woman and said that was his lifelong dream and actually Uh, did things to his body to make him become more like a woman. Now, uh, Bruce Jenner, known as Caitlyn Jenner today, will never fully be a woman. But he's struggling with his identity, and so therefore it's called gender dysphoria, which is gender uh, confusion, basically. Uh, And I'm not here to criticize that. I'm just here to use that as an illustration to show us that men are confused. Uh, Some men believe that Um, that they are far more than what they are. They have an inflated view of themselves. Some men view uh, themselves as being worthless. Uh, There's an identity problem. Some believe uh, that they are to be responsible for the family. Some believe that somebody else in the family is to be responsible for them. Some have a great work ethic. Some do not. Some believe you've got to be an athlete to be a real man. Some uh, do not believe that and shouldn't. Uh, Some men believe that there's no manhood in the music, the arts, the theater, or uh, in creative talent. That's just not true. 
uh, re- regardless of what you do, regardless of what your interests are, regardless of how brawny you look or not, you can be a man. You can act like a man. And that's why Scripture calls us to not cultural view of what manhood's all about, but to a character view of what men are all about. So I want to talk to you a little bit about that and uh, today walk through the five C's of maturity. Now the first one is courage. Mature men are courageous and they're not dominated by fear or feelings. They act out responsibility and with reason. They act out responsibly and with reason. There's a verse in the Bible that I'm often reminded of. It's 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 7. God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of love, power, and sound mind. The negative part of that verse is really, really important. God did not give us fearful feelings. He didn't give us the, uh, the weakness that we would give in to fear or give in to feelings. That's not of God. That's not what he wants you to do. If you're dominated by fear, dominated by feelings, you'll never really act like a man when it comes to courage. And courage is incredibly important. So for you to have courage, you have to deal with fear and deal with feelings in order to do the right thing. Courage is doing the right thing regardless of what you fear or how you feel. Um, All of us have some sort of fears or all of us struggle with some kinds of feelings. Uh, I personally have a fear of tight spots, tight, dark places. When I was a kid, uh, some of my friends, so-called friends, older older friends, um, I think I was 12 years old, and we were in the basement of a church, and uh, a church my dad pastored, and there was a casket down there uh, that was kind of a prop, but it was a real casket. And uh, they asked me if I'd fit in there, could I crawl in there and try it out? And so... I took the challenge and got in there, and they locked me in the casket and left me. And I can remember panicking over that idea that I would be left in that casket. Of course, my 12-year-old mind didn't reason that they had let me out or they had been in a heap of trouble, uh, that somebody would come looking for me. None of that was going through my mind at the time. It was just that I was locked in a casket uh, where dead people are placed, and it just really, really messed me up for tight places. Today, I still have an aversion to tight places, kind of a claustrophobia. Uh, and I really believe it began right back then and there. Uh, of course, within a few minutes, they came and let me out. So the story, it ends okay, but I, I still uh, refuse to get in a casket. When I die, I want to be cremated. Don't put me in a casket. Even if I'm dead, I don't want to be in there. Uh, but, you know, courage means you overcome feelings and you overcome fears like that or other things. Um, most of us deal with real life fears, fear of rejection, fear that we won't measure up, fear of some massive challenge that's in front of us that we don't know if that will be helpful, or feelings, feelings of inadequacy, uh, feelings of others ganging up on us, or a particular feeling or an attraction to another person or to another uh, situation. Uh, And you can't let those dominate your life. God does not give you a spirit of fear. Uh, He does not expect you to give in to your feelings, but rather to call you to do the right thing. And and what real men are. Real men learn, regardless of how they look, regardless of what their interests are, they learn to do the right thing in the situations they are confronted with. So courage is the first one. I should ask you the question today. Do you exhibit courage in overcoming your fears and overcoming your feelings so that you can act responsibly? God does not give you a spirit of fear. The second of the five C's is commitment. Mature men demonstrate responsibility to their spouses, their families, their friends, and other important relationships. They are selfless in their commitment. My wife, Kim, and I have been married 45 years, and often she'll say something, and she said this repeatedly, so I know it means a lot to her. She would say something like, thank you so much for working so hard during our younger years. Uh, And what what she's referring to is that our younger years of marriage, when we first started having children, uh, our commitment was for Kim to stay home with the kids and not work. And I was going through seminary at the time, so I didn't have a really great job. I had several smaller jobs. And uh, over those years, I really worked about three jobs at a time at any given moment. One of those was a newspaper route where I threw newspapers from 2 in the morning to 6 a.m. every day, seven days a week. 
a little bit longer on Sundays because of what was involved and how big those newspapers were. And I know today that's not even a real job. Nobody even knows about that anymore. Some of you have never even seen a newspaper, and certainly not a five- to six-pound Sunday newspaper with all the ads in it that I had to throw. But it was hard work back in the day doing that. I mean, I had to do a lot so my wife could stay at home. And her commitment to our children was incredible. But she says over and over, thank you for being the kind of man that would commit to doing this responsibility so that other things could happen in our household. She appreciates the fact that I did that. And I would have to say that um, it benefited our family hugely that she was willing to stay home and I was able to work. You know, providing for the household is a big deal. Um The scripture actually says if a man doesn't work, neither should he eat. And it goes further and says that uh, if a man doesn't take care of his own household, then he's worse than an infidel. In other words, he's actually betraying his faith because part of our faith is to be mature enough, responsible enough to take care of those around you. Uh, And I don't know what your work situation is. You You may have an incredible work ethic, but if you don't, you should. You should develop that work ethic so that you can take responsibility and be committed to providing for those uh, around you. Uh, At the end of your days, when you look back, you're going to want that kind of testimony of commitment. Uh, Today, there are lots of younger men who are looking uh, for wives, and and they would like to get married. Um, And sometimes they don't exhibit the kind of commitment that a young woman is looking for uh, when she looks for a husband. I would urge you, be committed to doing the responsible thing. Be committed to working hard, to having a great work ethic. Sometimes I would take my kids on the paper route with me, and even though it was kind of tough when it was cold or when it was wet, uh, or even when it was really hot because we we lived in Texas, um, they learned a work ethic that I think has helped them to this day. So commitment is a big thing. It's a big thing about maturity. So courage and then commitment. And then thirdly is consciousness. Mature men are self-aware. They see themselves accurately. They do not need to constantly seek approval. Now, in my view, this is a huge problem today. It's a big issue because men refuse to listen to others about who they are. They have an idealistic view of themselves or a pessimistic view of themselves. Um, They feel like that that people can accept them or reject them, but they're going to be who they are. And, um, and sometimes uh, that's a notable quality to say, I'm going to be who I am, especially if you are truly mature and uh, you're truly well-adjusted. But for the most part, many of us are not self-aware of who we really are. Recently, we, sh- we watched a TED Talk in our staff meeting, and it was on self-awareness. It was, a, it was done with excellence. And the woman there was a researcher, and in her research about self-awareness, she discovered that 95% of people believe that they are fully self-aware of who they are. But when the same people were walked through the criteria that this search group determined would be an accurate measure of self-awareness, only 15% were truly self-aware. In other words, most people had extreme misperceptions about their own life or personality or character, and they were not self-aware. So self-awareness is a big deal. I think it's a big deal in the workplace. I think it's a big deal at home. I think it's a a large factor in men's lives. Guys, you can be self-aware of who you are, but you need outside influences to help you be fully aware. Our men, in talking about this, brought up several great verses One, the book of Romans, which says that we should not think more highly of ourselves than we ought to. Um, Another one quoted out of Proverbs where he said that we should not be wise in our own eyes. Another verse that comes to mind out of Proverbs is that we uh, should trust in the Lord and not in our own understanding. That would apply to whoever we think we are or whatever we think we should be doing. Um, And I was reminded of the book of James where it says a man who hears the word and doesn't do it is like a man who goes and looks in a mirror and then he walks quickly away forgetting what he's seen. But whoever looks at the word and does those words, obeys the word, 
He's like a man that looks into the in, he looks intently into the into the mirror and sees who he really is and is determined to follow the law of liberty. Now those are the words of James and James chapter one and two. Uh, but the word itself can give us a good self awareness. Uh, I told the story today of being in college. My wife and I were in the same college, and she was a great student. She would study for hours. And I would go to the library and watch her study. She was so pretty, so cute, that I would just be happy watching her study. And I wasn't quite as dedicated to my studies as she was. And So one day we were in the library, and she's studying for an exam, and she's going to be there for hours, and I realized this. And you can't talk in the library. And uh, so after goofing off as much as I would be allowed to do, I uh, said, well, I'll just pick up this copy of the Bible and, and read through a book of Proverbs because I'd been challenged to do that, and I hadn't done it yet. So I took a big, long piece of paper out, and I wrote down, as I read through all of the chapters of Proverbs, 31 chapters of Proverbs, so I was there a long time, all the characteristics of a wise man and all the characteristics of a fool. Because in the book of Proverbs, those are those two are contrasted all the way through. And I ended up with a really long list of everything that, that Proverbs says a wise man did or said and everything that a fool did or said. And I had a real serious come to Jesus moment at the end of reading that list when I realized I was really a lot a lot like a fool and not so much like a wise man. And I looked at that and I thought, I need to make some changes. I need to ask God to help me change some things in my life. Now, I share all this with you to remind you that the outside influence that helps us have a good self-awareness includes the scriptures. And when you read the scripture, then you're going to find some things that it says about you that you absolutely need to change. And I, I want to encourage you to do that. I want you to look at the scripture and let it change your life because that will help you have a good sense of consciousness. Number four is character. Character. Mature men know that they need to display the inner character that comes from following Christ. They know they are a work in progress. So when I talk about character, and I, and I use the word display, I'm really speaking about being an example to those around us with our good character, with character that's being developed. Our young men of this world need to see men of character. They need to see men that can shake the hand with a firm handshake, look in the eyes, and carry on a conversation with a younger man who's looking for an example. I think the broken family in our nation of America is uh, a great example of why men lack a good sense of self-identity. They pattern themselves after everybody else in the world instead of who they ought to be patterning themselves after. Some of them pattern themselves after rock stars or celebrities or, or rap rapsters or or some form of the arts, or a football player, or whatever else it is. They, they try to mirror somebody that's not a real example in the sense of being close to them, but someone that they like the looks of or they like the success of. But we need men who have character and display that character so that younger men around us can see what character looks like, what manhood looks like, and learn to identify with that and pursue that. We need men of character. The church is the best place you'll find those kinds of people, even though you'll find some who are hypocritical, most who are not, but you'll find a great resource for seeing examples. But part of this whole talk is about you being an example to younger men who may not show up at church to do that. Um, we have a guy that uh, I know well who spends some time in our student ministry area and I've noticed when he goes in there, he goes in there because he has a son in there, and uh, he just checks things out. Um, but he'll say hi to several young men, and I like the way he shakes their hand. I like the way he looks at them in the eyes, and I like the uh, impression it makes on those young men because they realize that they're shaking hands with somebody they respect. They're being listened to by somebody they respect, and, uh, and that, I think, is a powerful thing. Uh, have you ever shaken the hand of a uh, of a younger man that didn't know how to shake hands? He didn't know how to grip your hand. He didn't have any strength of grip. He didn't. He he kind of it kind of felt like he was shaking hands with a wet fish, and or you were shaking hands with a limp hand. Uh, nobody's taught that young man how to shake hands. Just the the basic 
of being a man involved greeting other men and looking other men in the eyes. It's very, very uh, simple, and yet it's left out of so much. So I want to encourage you to be an example. Have the kind of character that others can look at you and say, I should probably be more like that guy. Older men are to teach younger men those qualities. Then the fifth one is that acting like men or acting like a man means that you must be collaborative. Collaborative. Collaborate. Mature men are teachable. They want to learn what others have to teach them, so they constantly listen, watch, and value wisdom. Now, this is a big deal, guys. Listen, 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 listen to other people around you. Find mentors who can teach you at work, who can teach you uh, on the home life, who can teach you what it means to be a man. Find someone to teach you to, to shoot a gun, to defend yourself, to fix something, uh, to, to do your own auto repair. Find somebody to mentor you in the scriptures. It's so important that you do that. Everywhere I have lived, it's been my good fortune to meet someone that was far wiser than I was, older than I was, and willing to sit down and mentor me in some way. I've been so thankful for that. And I can name at least five men who had a profound impact on my life besides my father. And my father had a really, really great impact on my life. But I would ask these guys, could you teach me? Could we meet? Could I ask you questions? You don't have to do a whole lot. Just answer my questions. And when I would meet with them, I would learn all kinds of amazing things. And uh, even today, I want to be teachable. Real men are teachable. They want to learn what others have to teach them. So they listen, watch, and value wisdom. And again, that's what the church is all about. If you're a young man out there and you're listening to this podcast and you've got guys at work that you know, guys in your peer group that you know, maybe guys that you recreate with, you go play sports with them, you go to play golf with them, or you do video gaming, or whatever it is you do, you fix things or build cars, whatever it might be. That's one part of maturity. But the spiritual part of maturity is irreplaceable, and you find it in the church of Jesus Christ. That's true. And I encourage you to get involved in church, meet some men, go to men's groups. I'm speaking to men every Tuesday morning at 6 a.m. It's quite a commitment to get there, but we talk about man kind of things. And it's really important that we find those men to mentor us so that we can be the right kind of men. So let me summarize those five for you. Act like men. Five C's of maturity. Courage, commitment, consciousness, character, and collaborative. And I want to encourage you to put those things in your lives. And as you do so, you're going to grow as a man. Well, thank you for joining us for our Man to Man podcast. And I hope you'll join us again in the future. Um, this is uh, something that we'll have at least 12 weeks, and we'll have another season in January of next year. And uh, we'll keep doing these things because we believe that men need to hear things that make men grow. Until next time, this is John Metter at Man to Man. <laughs>